This for me is a biggie. One of those games that I never forgot about or shook off. I compare new titles to my memories of it, and sometimes I find myself daydreaming about moments that happened many years ago. Battlefield Bad Company 2 wasn't my first experience of DICE's world. Indeed, I'd played Battlefield 1942 and the accompanying mod, Desert Combat, but I was never consumed by it in the same way. Bad Company 2 had me from the word go. I remember a TV trailer vividly, the dusty streets, a tank, and Queen of the Stone Age's millionaire blasting to the action. From seeing the likes of Battlefield 2 from afar, from experiencing the earlier Battlefield 1942, it finally looked like they had a game engine to deliver on their vision. So along with this being my gateway into the Battlefield world, and I mean that by the sort of Battlefield experience that we still see in modern titles, it just so happens to also be one of the most highly regarded Battlefield games ever. So why is that? And is it worth playing in 2019? Firing it up hit me hard with nostalgia, the DICE logo sound, the main menu music. But it doesn't take long to notice quite how old this game is. Indeed, it was released in 2010, over nine years ago now. The actual interface for the main menu certainly feels its age, it's clunky and awkward. But you don't play the main menu, obviously, so let's scan the servers and see if people still play. And yes, sure enough, they do. In fact, I never really struggled to find an ongoing match for Bad Company 2. Even when all I want to do is play rush mode, there's still a few nearly full servers with semi-manageable pings. Run around and some other impressions that your memory didn't quite recall are present. Things like the field of view is unbelievably narrow for what I sort of recall. The view bob is pronounced and there's zero strafing at all during sprinting, so it gives a sort of quite restrictive first impression when you're used to more modern titles. In fact, if this was released today, you might even use the phrase console-like in the lack of tuning options to customise the gameplay elements in the menus. For all the sort of rose-tinted glasses I have for this game, we do indeed have it good with more modern FPS titles. But with a bit of time, a period of re acclimatization Bad Company 2's gameplay and overall experience just drags you back in. That chaos is just amazing to behold. The feeling of being in a washing machine spin cycle, picked up and existing within that kind of fury while also being a part of it, it really does feel like the core of Bad Company 2, and that went on to be a core pillar of what made Battlefield, Battlefield. Walls disappearing, whole buildings falling down, trees exploding from tank fire. It all makes the level look utterly devastated once you've been playing for a while. And it's a wild ride that I never really tired of. And just a quick aside to say, please do tap the thumb button if you're enjoying the video, or even if you just want to tell me to make more of these kind of look back retro kind of vids. It really helps me out with YouTube and visibility and all that stuff. So super appreciate it if you choose to thumb up. Thank you. It would be remiss of me not to talk about Rush Mode 2. Rush Mode was in previous titles, such as the original Bad Company. With Bad Company 2, it really found its feet and was elevated into something truly special. Core to Rush in BC2 are the maps, that much is probably obvious. But in this game, the maps are tailor-made for Rush, not simply adapted from Conquest maps. This means they tend to be a bit narrower, perhaps a little longer, but with real step progress in them. The designers knew the players would experience them sequentially, so took the opportunity to really change how they felt as you played. For example, look at the Valparaiso map. Starts off in the jungle, moves to more of a base fight, a valley floor, and into a tough push uphill into a well-defended final objective. Then there's the awesome Arica Harbour. A wide open dusty valley into a military base that gives way to an attack through a deserted town and into a fight along a bridge before ending in a more industrial port. There's so much feeling of progression and difference to these sections of those maps. This is what sculpted and toned my love of Rush as a mode. I know Conquest has been a battlefield staple. But the lack of structure, the annoyance of having people spawn behind you that dissolves the ability for any sort of front line between the teams to form really undermines the game. Rush is arguably more structured, but for me at least, that only works to create a more enjoyable experience. I'd say Bad Company 2 is probably as good as we've ever experienced Rush mode. Battlefield 3 was pretty good, certainly had its moments, but there was often a feeling of Rush not being the main aim when designing some of those maps. 
Battlefield 4 was, for Rush at least, even more of a step backwards. Yes, Rush in Bad Company 2 remains a high watermark for arguably the best mode the franchise has ever made. It's worth pointing out that Bad Company 2 isn't as reliant on air vehicles as in some other Battlefield titles. There are helicopters, but they mostly feel tank-like. They often don't pack the same kind of firepower and can be more difficult to take down. They're more often like logistics for attackers who are trying to do something more coordinated rather than something that's just used to farm infantry before buzzing off behind a hill to repair again. This game was the first outing to another feature that became a pillar to that Battlefield experience for me, the wonder of the War Tapes audio mode. It's basically a mixed setting where your senses are turned up to 11. Sounds become almost like real audio recorded in that sort of intense situation. In audio nerd speak, it sounds like the audio has been sort of compressed and then the gain has been jacked up. But there's like distortion there too. With war tapes is the feeling of some sounds almost being too loud to kind of process or capture. Exactly the sort of thing you might experience if you were actually there, or a microphone might pick up if this were indeed a taped recording of a real war. It's that kind of grit and edge that I love to the sound setting. Weapons pop and cackle at a distance and are astonishingly loud and echoey when used in enclosed areas. It's true that things might feel a bit more muddy with some sounds sort of overriding others, but for me it totally sells the reality that the game is trying to convey. It might not be optimal in a pro eSports 360 no-scope kind of situational awareness way, but for a, wow, this is astonishing, that feeling, it's second to none. It's not the difference between the normal gaming options in the audio, like TV or headphones or whatever. It's like a whole other level of immersion to the action that you're viewing. Like you've taken out earplugs and are actually hearing the game properly for the first time. Destructibility was also debuted in Bad Company 2 and quickly also became a cornerstone of what it means to be a Battlefield game. In fact, with the movement to more densely packed urban maps in Battlefield 3 and 4, you might argue that, like with Rush, Battlefield 2 with its house-sized buildings had a landscape more destructible than any other Battlefield game. For years, really since the original Doom, the world was mostly inert in FPS games. Buildings perhaps looked familiar but were indestructible. Well, Bad Company 2 introduced you to that feeling of firing from a window, ducking behind in to reload, only to have the side of the building disintegrate around you. It was like your world got turned upside down. All that you knew from years of gaming had changed. It made the whole world feel fluid and alive. So how is this game doing nine years after release? Well, there's certainly a bunch of servers still around. You never had a problem finding a rush mode map at any time of the day, but you'll struggle if you're looking for a specific map. There's normally a couple of well-populated rush games running at once. So, is it worth playing in 2019? I know I have rose-tinted glasses on for this one, but if you like Battlefield 3 and 4 and want something more, then I'd say pick this up for sure, and I've just realised that that rhymes. You'll see where the series came from and get an appreciation for Rush at one of its finest moments. What's more, I picked this up on Steam for just a few pounds the last time there was a big sale, so you don't have to pay a lot for it to try it out for yourselves. And as always, it's Steam, so you can play for two hours or own it for less than two weeks, and you can get a refund, no problem. It's slightly disheartening that the expansion Battlefield Bad Company 2 Vietnam isn't as well served. It's also on Steam for a couple of pounds, but there are only eight servers that I could see, and only a few people playing on one occasion. It's a shame, because it was a super stylized, well-made addition to Bad Company 2. It seems to have sort of fallen by the wayside. Did you play Bad Company 2? Do you agree with me that this is the best Battlefield ever? Leave a comment below right now telling me your thoughts and passionate feelings. And while you're there, why not tell me what you think of these kind of retro videos too? Kind of the first time I've ever gone back and looked at something like this, so I'm interested to know your opinions. If you enjoyed the video, please do tap the thumb button, the subscribe button and enable notifications so you know when your next video is ready. As always, thanks for watching and for all the support, I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Take care.